Hey everybody, Brayden here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be covering another game from the Canadian Open 2022. I am playing with the white pieces. I am on a 50% score. I lost my first game, then won my second. I am now playing against uh, Joseph here, who is playing with the black pieces, who is 2200, very strong opponent. Let's see how I do. E4. E6, D4, D5. One thing to note is that I played E4 instead of D4. I was playing D4 a little bit lately, but my last D4 game from this event made me question that. I was also told my opponent played E5, so I was hoping to get into one of those positions, but as you can see, this is not an E5 opening, this is a French. And a big reason why I quit playing E4 was because of the French. So I have some things to solve here. I end up fixing up my repertoire soon after this, but generally I was a little sad to see French defenses for the tournament and a little bit after. Eventually I found my footing with it, and I feel like I have a very solid repertoire against the French now. But at this time, especially since I was waning towards... Mm, E4, uh, winning against e4 and, and mostly playing d4 there was this was just gone from the start honestly uh and that may might just ruin the result immediately but let's see how it goes e takes d5 e takes d5 knight f3 bishop d6 bishop d3 knight c6 and c3 joseph plays knight g to e7 here and the idea is uh at least in my opinion i th generally thought it was bishop f5 so i play queen c2 preventing bishop f5 but now bishop g4 is kind of a problem where we don't really want to move the knight but we don't want to defend it like we want to play like bishop g5 or bishop e3 and then knight d2 but this puts us in an awkward position where knight d2 feels necessary and because of this joseph kind of goes uh, on the attack here. Queen d7. Castles. Long castles. And. Well now it's opposite side castling. French exchange position. So I, I try going a little crazy. Uh, b4. I don't think there's anything wrong with this move. King b8. And now a4. Again. Nothing particularly wrong with it. Now we see knight g6. Trying to go. For the attack here. Rookie one is fine. I should have played this. Where if we see something like knight f4, we can play bishop f1. And if we see something like rookie a, we can just play like bishop a3. And again, knight f4, we generally should meet with bishop to f1. Everything's defended. I think this is okay. I didn't go for this though. Instead, I went for a5. With the idea that if I go b5 here, maybe they go knight to a5. And I wasn't too excited to see this because... Well, the knight's in the way for me pushing. So if I play a5 first, uh, this is a way to think about it, is if I play a5 first, now if I play b5, they can't play knight a5. And then we can try to start breaking through. But this is just not really correct at all. They play knight f4. I play b5, but this isn't really so great. Knight e7 was played. And already feels like there's some trouble brewing here for example there's already potential threats of taking on d3 which is not something we want anyways losing at the bishop pair for no reason in what can easily be a, a position that opens up as well as playing some sort of bishop f5 with some activity and it feels like black's attack is going to be coming a lot quicker than white's here despite having the pawns on a5 and b5 so i go for broke and play knight e5 and the idea I had here was after bishop takes and d takes uh, is that I was hoping to get in b6 or, or a6. Like I was expecting a variation like this to happen um, where a dream come true would me for a dream come true for me would be something like bishop f5 and queen d4 something like this where I can hopefully start blockading here. I don't even think it works. I think c5. Um, might even be a pretty good reply, which it looks crazy, but the idea 
of taking with the knight looks promising and even taking with the queen some rook c8 not really sure how this would turn out i guess just queen d6 check for the moment but this pawn's gonna drop this pawn's pretty weak this isn't calculated with an engine or anything this is just kind of intuition speaking here and also there's bishop d3 which um this pawn might just be taken yeah that's just intuition speaking though but my opponent finds a very interesting move, bishop h3, which causes some problems. Uh, because they're threatening queen g4, and it's hard to avoid. So I thought I had a variation here. Again, I would like to say I was playing like a move every 30 seconds. This was a long time control. I had absolutely no reason to play this fast in this game. I think I resigned with like full time on my clock, which is the dumbest thing you could ever do in a chess game is not use any of your time, yet lose it. Uh, but that's exactly what happened to me. So I took queen takes h3, bishop e4 um, was what I thought uh, might have worked. And the idea is this, queen takes e4, um, which makes a little bit of sense. But, yeah, it doesn't work out, obviously. Because after uh, bishop e4, my opponent played knight e2 check. And after knight e2 check, king h1, there's d takes e4. And the problem is f1 is a little loose if, if d2... Like, right now there's a threat of, like, rook takes d2, for example. And f1 will just hang. And if I take on e4, which I did in the game, they have knight takes e3, which is pretty strong. And yeah, so I, I resigned here in this position with like full time on my clock. And that was kind of a huge sign to me that I had been rushing my games way too much. This was ridiculous, unnecessary, um, kind of a, just a disgrace of chess. Um, and completely disrespectful to the game, it felt like, and my opponent for, like, not putting up a good enough fight. Uh, yeah, so after, after this event, uh, I, I started, I believe, not even after this event, actually, after the next event, I started spending a lot more time and, and trying to really patch that problem up, but it persisted throughout this and the next tournament, and then I finally think I got a better grip of it after that. But just a warning that there, there are cases like this in this tournament and the next one where I just lose like straight away. And there is an argument maybe it's playable after queen e3. This is like the move that's um, recommended by the engine. Uh, I remember some people coming by the game like, why didn't you play queen g2? Uh, but it's like, I would just be down a bunch of pawns. There's no reason to go for queen g2 here because it, well, it's just going to lose. Queen e3 at least is a little bit more of a try. The idea is to start attacking on the 7th rank and attacking f7 and everything. Uh, this still feels extremely bad though and uh, probably should be lost with good technique. So yeah, that's why I, I end up resigning after... Knight takes c3. It just feels like there's not really any hope here, not really a reason to play on, and I just feel a lot of shame when I see this this position in this game because completely unnecessary. But that's going to cover it for round number three. I do apologize for such an atrocious game. It's okay to play bad games, but to play bad games and not spend your time like, not use it wisely, not even try, like, this felt like it wasn't even trying, but I have to say I was trying, because it's, like, it's rude to say I wasn't, like, I, I was trying, I was just being quick, I was being stupid, I was making bad choices, um, so yeah, that's, that's gonna cover it, but that's it for this game, I will see you guys in round number four, have a good one, hope you enjoyed, the mockery I made of myself today. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.